Today we're diving into a topic that's all around us, but often goes unnoticed. Yes, I'm talking about computers and the incredible technology that powers our everyday lives. Computers are everywhere. Phones, laptops, even our refrigerators use them. From the moment we wake up and check our phones to the time we set our alarms at night, we're interacting with computers in countless ways. But have you ever wondered how we measure their power, speed, and storage? These metrics are crucial for understanding how well our devices perform and what they can handle. It can seem confusing, but it's actually pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to make more informed decisions about the tech you use and buy. Think of it like this. Just like we use inches and pounds in everyday life, we use special units to measure things in the digital world. These units help us quantify and compare the capabilities of different devices. These units help us understand how computers store information, connect to the internet, and process tasks. For instance, when you hear about a computer's storage capacity, it's usually measured in gigabytes or terabytes. In this video, we'll break down these units of measure in simple terms. We'll explore how bits and bytes form the foundation of digital storage and how they scale up to larger units like megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes. We'll cover everything from bits and bytes, which are the smallest units of digital information, to gigahertz and terabytes, which measure processing speed and storage capacity, respectively, to gigahertz and terabytes. Understanding these terms will give you a better grasp of what your devices are capable of and how they compare to others on the market. By the end, you'll be a tech-savvy pro. You'll know exactly what to look for when shopping for new gadgets and how to get the most out of the ones you already own. So, buckle up and get ready to dive into the fascinating world of computer units. Whether you're a tech enthusiast or just curious about how things work, this journey will be both educational and fun. Let's get started. Let's start with the basics, bits and bytes. These tiny units are the foundation of all digital information. These are the building blocks of digital information. Without them, our digital world wouldn't exist. Think of a bit like a tiny light switch that can be either on, one, or off, zero. That's it. This simple on-off state is the essence of binary code. A byte is simply a group of eight bits. This grouping allows for more complex information to be represented. Why eight? Well, eight bits can represent a single character, like a letter, number, or symbol. This is the standard unit of data in computing. So, when you type a sentence, you're actually stringing together bytes of information. Each letter, space, and punctuation mark is a byte. Pretty cool, right? These bits and bytes are how computers store and process everything from your favorite photos and videos to complex software programs. They are the lifeblood of digital technology. Now that we've covered the basics, let's move on to larger units of data storage. From kilobytes to terabytes, understanding these units will help you grasp the scale of digital information. A kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, a megabyte is 1,024 kilobytes, a gigabyte is 1,024 megabytes, and a terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes. These larger units help us manage and quantify the vast amounts of data we use daily. In today's world, data isn't just stored on your computer. It's also stored in the cloud, allowing for easy access and sharing across devices and locations. This interconnectedness of data storage and transfer is what makes modern technology so powerful. It enables everything from streaming your favorite shows to running global businesses. Every time you use your smartphone, bits and bytes are at work, ensuring that your messages are sent, your apps run smoothly, and your photos are saved. So the next time you use any digital device, remember the humble bits and bytes that make it all possible. They truly are the atoms of information. You've probably heard of kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes. These units describe how much digital information something can hold. Think of it like this. Kilobyte, a small text file. Megabyte, a few photos or songs. Gigabyte, a movie or a video game. Terabyte, thousands of movies or a massive library of data. As technology advances, we're able to store more and more data in smaller and smaller devices. Remember those bulky hard drives from a few years ago? Now we have tiny SD cards that can hold terabytes of data. Data storage is constantly evolving and new units are emerging all the time. Ever wondered what those MBPs and GBPs numbers mean when you're choosing an internet plan? They stand for megabits per second, MBPs and gigabits per second, GBPs and measure your internet speed. Imagine a highway MBPs, a single lane of traffic, GBPs, multiple lanes of traffic flowing at high speed. The higher the megabits per second or gigabits per second, the faster you can download and upload data. This means less buffering when streaming your favorite shows 
or downloading large files. Fast internet is crucial in today's connected world, especially for things like video conferencing and online gaming. In today's digital age, the speed and efficiency of our computers are more crucial than ever. Whether you're a gamer, a video editor, or just someone who uses a computer for everyday tasks, understanding how to measure a computer's power can help you make informed decisions. Now let's talk about how we measure the actual processing power of a computer. This involves looking at several key metrics that give us an idea of how well a computer can perform various tasks. This is where things like flops and gigahertz come in. These terms might sound technical, but they are essential for understanding a computer's capabilities. Flops, or floating point operations per second, measures how many calculations a computer can perform in a second. This is particularly important for tasks that require a lot of mathematical computations, such as scientific simulations, 3D rendering, and complex data analysis. Think of it like a car's horsepower. The higher the flops, the faster the computer. Just as a car with more horsepower can accelerate faster and handle more demanding driving conditions, a computer with higher flops can process more data and perform more complex tasks efficiently. Gigahertz measures the clock speed of a computer's processor. This tells us how many cycles per second the processor can execute. It's like the tempo of a song. A higher gigahertz means the processor can execute instructions faster. Imagine listening to a song at a faster tempo. Everything happens more quickly. And the same goes for a processor with a higher gigahertz. Both flops and gigahertz are important for tasks like video editing, gaming, and running complex software. These activities require a lot of processing power to handle the large amounts of data and complex calculations involved. The more demanding the task, the more powerful the processor needs to be. For instance, video editing software needs to render high-definition video, which requires a lot of computational power. Similarly, modern games with high-quality graphics and real-time physics simulations need a fast processor to run smoothly. Understanding these units can help you choose the right computer for your needs. If you know you'll be doing a lot of heavy lifting with your computer, such as gaming or video editing, you'll want a machine with high flops and gigahertz. On the other hand, if your needs are more basic, such as browsing the internet or using office applications, you might not need as much power. When shopping for a new computer, take a close look at the specifications. Pay attention to the flops and gigahertz ratings, as these will give you a good indication of the machine's performance capabilities. By understanding these metrics, you can make a more informed decision and choose a computer that will meet your needs both now and in the future. In summary, measuring computer power is all about understanding the key metrics like flops and gigahertz. These measurements help us gauge how well a computer can perform different tasks, from simple web browsing to complex scientific computations. By knowing what these terms mean and how they affect performance, you can ensure that you select the right computer for your specific needs. Computers need power to run, and we measure that power consumption in watts and kilowatt hours. Watts measure the rate at which a device uses electricity, like a light bulb's wattage. A more powerful computer will generally have a higher wattage. Kilowatt hours measure the total amount of electricity used over time. Think of it like your electricity bill. The more you use your computer, the higher your kilowatt hour usage. Being mindful of your computer's power consumption can help you save money on your electricity bill and reduce your environmental impact. We've covered a lot of ground today. Here's a quick recap of the units we discussed. Bits and bytes. The building blocks of digital information. Kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, units of data storage capacity. Megabits per second and gigabits per second. Units of internet speed. Flops and gigahertz. Units of computer processing power. Watts and kilowatts per hour units of electricity consumption. Understanding these units can help you make informed decisions about the technology you use every day. As you can see, understanding these units of measure can empower you as a tech consumer. You'll be able to choose the right internet plan, buy a computer that meets your needs, and even be more energy efficient. It's all about demystifying the language of technology and making it accessible to everyone. Knowledge is power, and in the digital age, tech knowledge is more important than ever. What are your thoughts on these units of measure? Did you learn something new? Share your comments below. Share this video with your friends and family and help them understand the fascinating world of computer units. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tech tips, tricks, and explanations. See you in the next video.